Hi, this is uh, Dr. Rolando Toyos from Nashville and Memphis and New York City. Um, we have gotten IPL for dry eye disease approved. Uh, this was through Luminous, which is introducing a new IPL system for dry eye called Optolite. So this approval of IPL for dry eye is a long time coming. It's something that I've been working on for 20 years. In the study, we had three different centers uh, cooperating. Uh, Toyo's Clinic was one of them, Dr. Desai in Florida, and Dr. Dell in Texas. So what we did is we took two groups. Uh, one group received a sham light treatment with expression of the meibomian glands, and the other group received IPL with expression of the glands. There's 88 patients, pretty much equally divided, all age ranges. Uh, they had Fitzpatrick one through four. We're still going through the data, but a lot of the data that the FDA used to approve the luminous IPL for dry eye uh, uh, was something that I presented here at OSN Italy. So here are some of the things that were very interesting to us. One is we had an increase in tear breakup time in the patients who had IPL with expression that was significant. But we also saw that there was an increase in the sham group uh, with their tear breakup time with expression, which shows us that expression is very vital in terms of uh, getting the meibomian glands to work better. So if you're going to do IPL, you should do IPL with expression. In the protocol, it was four treatments that the patients got, and what we saw in the IPL group is their meibomian glands worked better after each session. That's something that we've seen before, so we measured that with MiboScore. The other thing that we measured that was very interesting is that we had patients uh, recoup meibomian glands with IPL as they went through the protocol. So this idea that glands are dead, that they're scarred, that they're no longer going to work, really didn't bear out. If you give them intense pulse light over a course of treatments, their glands uh, will come back. So that was important. And then what we saw, which was clinically significant, was that sham versus IPL, uh, in the IPL group, more of these glands, meibomian glands, uh, worked better. The other thing is, in the study, we were treating with my protocol and my parameters from ear to ear in the lower lid, but we found that this energy transferred up to the upper lid so that the upper lid uh, was improved. So the Optolite, uh, this uh, IPL system that we're using for dry eye has some advantages. One is it has a new little pencil tip uh, that you can use right on to the lid. So instead of having a big tip that is cumbersome to get to the meibomian glands, you have a little tip uh, that can get and navigate through uh, the orbital rim and get to the lid margins. And then it has all the advantages that you're used to, which is it can pulse the energy, uh, you have control of the thermal relaxation time and energy. Uh, there's two systems, there's one just for dry eye and then there's one that expands out to aesthetics. Uh, I prefer the one that expands out to aesthetics because we also use the intense pulse light for facial rejuvenation, we use it for getting rid of pigment on the skin, we use it for rosacea to get rid of telangiectasias, uh, we um, use it for chalazians and that's another good reason to get the pencil tip because if you have somebody with a hordeolum or chalazian you can treat on uh, the hordeolum uh, and the chalazian. So this is a very exciting times. It was a lot of work to get here but uh, uh, now you have an FDA approval uh, so it's gold standard in terms of intense pulse lights uh, for dry eye and the adoption of IPL for dry eye is extensive throughout the world. So I'm very excited that a concept that uh, I invented and that I've pushed through 
uh, has finally gotten to this point and the adoption uh, has happened so rapidly uh, throughout the world. So thank you for the time and I've uh, enjoyed being here at uh, OSN Italy.